Welcome to another award presentation from Global Banking and Finance. Global Banking and Finance Review is a leading brand name in the world of finance and banking. Their awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes that are prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. This time, we're pleased to offer two awards to FE Credit Vietnam. FE Credit has approximately 30,000 employees and over 10 million customers. To help Vietnamese people solve financial difficulties and improve the quality of life, FE Credit develops fast and easy consumer finance solutions to mass and upper mass segments, as well as people who have no access to bank loans. A simple phone call away, FE Credit offers representatives to make home visits to discuss a consumer durable loan with quick solutions. FE Credit offers several special services, including motorbike loans directly at source of purchase. And FE Credit has a large call center employing specialist advisors to help small business operators to flourish and expand. Global Banking and Finance is pleased to offer FE Credit awards for Best Consumer Finance Company for Customer Experience Asia 2019 and Best Consumer Finance Company Vietnam 2019. To find out more, we spoke to FE Credit's Chief Marketing Officer, Mr. Baska Rangachari. Well, first of all, thank you so much for joining us on this hookup from Ho Chi Minh City. And of course, congratulations on receiving the awards from Global Banking and Finance. Thank you very much for this amazing news. Uh, we are delighted, honored, and humbled to receive these two prestigious awards from Global Banking and Finance. I want to specifically say thank you for this global recognition on behalf of all our teams who have worked tirelessly to put FE in the number one position. Well, that's excellent. Let's talk more about uh, the business and work that you do. Uh, firstly, we know that uh, the financial industry in Vietnam is, is growing all the time. What do you think the driving forces behind that growth really are? The growth of consumer finance in Vietnam is actually in tandem with macroeconomic growth but it's particularly aided by a few key factors. Number one is government policy. The government in Vietnam has been very progressive. They have been uh, very market oriented in the way they drive the growth. Particularly, they've been very successful, smart and professional in attracting foreign direct investment. Just last year, they attracted over $340 billion of investment into the country. The second factor that helps this is that this foreign direct investment is going into rural areas, into manufacturing industries, into process driven, into labor intensive driven industries. What this is creating is vast amount of employment for people in Vietnam, those particularly in rural areas and with lower education. This then leads to people having much better disposable income, having more stable incomes, which then leads to a better economic stability. The third factor is that a large proportion of the population in Vietnam is young. Majority of them were born post the 80s and therefore they have ambition, they have a desire for the future, they are energized, they are motivated to work harder and upgrade their lives. Because of this and the combination of continued employment, rising salaries, their aspiration for a better lifestyle is at its high. People want to achieve a better lifestyle for their families. They want to have a better lifestyle for themselves. And that consumerism is actually driving the growth of consumer finance. So what do you think the future of the consumer finance industry actually is right now? Personally, I think the future for consumer finance is really bright. As the economy continues to grow, as people's aspirations grow, the prospects for consumer finance continue to grow. Why is that? It is still a largely cash economy in Vietnam. Consumer finance penetration is only around 11%, which means there is a lot more upside for Vietnam to become a cashless society. So far, the growth of consumer finance has been driven largely by the expansion of physical distribution network, and therefore reach into rural areas has been crucial. The next wave of growth, however, will ride on the fact that a large proportion of Vietnamese are digitally savvy consumers. The other factor that makes consumer finance attractive is that today in the business, the yields are attractive. Uh, the interest margins are good, loan losses are relatively low, and the economy is growing. 
And this has of course attracted uh, many foreign players and many competitors, particularly from Japan, Korea and the region to come into the market and become our competitors. Uh, while there is increased competition, what this means for the consumer is there's a lot more choice. And beyond the consumer having choice, it also raises the industry standard and make sure that the best players continue to grow. Lastly, I see the growth of consumer finance as very positive because we have a very supportive, market-oriented regulator in the State Bank of Vietnam. They have been prudent and yet progressive in the way they deployed new policies in order to enable the growth of consumer finance industry in a sustainable and equitable manner. And having said that, looking forward to the next decade, do you expect the market consolidation to continue? Well, it's a bit difficult to say whether the market will consolidate, but uh, certainly the market is transforming. With the entry of new players, uh, new styles of competition are coming in. Uh, with increasing digitization, new capabilities are coming into the market. So certainly it's transforming and with increased competition, uh, we do expect uh, a degree of survival of the fittest. Of course, if there are external changes in the economy, for example, if there's a global economic slowdown, that would definitely affect Vietnam, since Vietnam is a big export-oriented market, and that could have a domino effect uh, in local sentiment, in people's ability to borrow, and therefore consumer finance companies. Uh, inevitably, I don't expect it to consolidate in the short term uh, in an inorganic manner, but rather a more natural shakeout could happen if there is a slowdown in the marketplace, which will then mean the better and the faster and the more nimble and the more well-organized companies will continue to grow in the future. I think one of the first challenges is a geographical challenge. Uh, so far, the growth of consumer finance has been predicated on the growth of physical distribution network. Physically, Vietnam is a very longish country, and therefore, access to rural areas uh, is already partially a challenge. Secondly, for consumer finance companies to set up a physical network, it may not make commercial sense. The business case won't stand up to set up in every small village, and therefore, the inability to bring consumer finance organized credit access to people in those places. The second challenge is black credit is still uh, prevalent, uh, especially with the uh, lower income segments. What is black credit? It's basically unorganized finance. Uh, it could be illegal money lending at exorbitant rates. The challenge is for many of the people in these rural areas, such credit is provided by a friendly neighborhood lender who has no forms to fill. Uh, he makes uh, cash available almost instantly and they simply have to pay back at the end of the day or the end of the week. So the entire process ease makes credit, black credit still an attractive option uh, for these consumers, although the interest rates could be more than double of consumer finance. And especially when we're looking at lower income segments, say a noodle seller, a factory worker, a motorbike rider uh, who does delivery, for them time is money. So the moment any application process or time to wait becomes longer than what they desire, uh, they tend to go back to black credit. This is also the reason for consumer finance companies to make the entire process faster, easier and simpler. The third challenge is credit scoring. Uh, because the credit bureau in the country is still relatively new, it's only been around for about four or five years, consumer finance companies' ability to lend based on bureau data gets limited by the quality of that information. And finally, there is also collection challenges. Because it's a physically distributed country and many people work well outside of their hometown, uh, the ability to track and collect on a customer who has gone delinquent can be a challenge. While these challenges exist, they are definitely addressable and solvable, and we at FE Credit have actually solved for them. The basic solution comes down to fast process, easy application and quick credit decisions. And we've been able to successfully do that using digital technology and digital apps on the mobile. Well, looking at uh, Vietnam itself, what will you say were the challenges and indeed opportunities uh, concerned with the consumer finance industry at this particular moment? Do they have an aversion to borrowing? Well, to some extent, because as with most typical Asian cultures, uh, Vietnam is a savings oriented culture. However, uh, more and more people, especially in the lower income segment, understand that in order for them to have the lifestyle of the future, they need to manage their cash flows. 
and hence borrowing for the short term, be it you know 12 months, 6 months, 24 months, is not a bad thing in order to be able to afford a lifestyle for their family which is better than what it otherwise would be. As the market leader, we also have a duty to educate customers that there is something called good debt and bad debt. Good debt is when you borrow and you manage your finances so that you are disciplined in making the repayments and that way you can afford a lifestyle that probably would have been only available 24 months later, you can afford it today. So this is something that we need to educate the consumers more and more about. Well, you touched upon some of the issues concerning regulation in Vietnam at the moment. Would you personally like to see some deregulation or changes made? And I've been in banking for 22 years and worked across uh, six geographies. And therefore, I've seen uh, the boom and bust credit cycles in uh, this region across several countries uh, through several economic cycles. One of the things I admire and I like is the fact that the State Bank of Vietnam are prudent yet progressive, right? They take very measured approach to how they issue new regulations and they have growth caps on various consumer finance players and they monitor it on a regular basis. They issue new growth caps every year and therefore every player is only allowed to grow within a certain range. While that's great for the economy, of course, putting on a commercial hat, we would love to have a higher growth cap. Now, do I see the need for regulations to evolve? I actually think that, say, ongoing uh, dialogue between the players and the State Bank of Vietnam to evolve regulations as the landscape changes. For example, as the country digitalizes more, as we go more and more to electronic applications, electronic processing and electronic disbursements, some of the old regulations may no longer apply. Uh, as an example, when we launched our digital lending platform SNAP, uh, we approached the State Bank of Vietnam to actually approve e-signatures which historically the regulations required wet signatures. Uh, through dialogue and constructive uh, feedback, we were act successful in actually getting their support to launch e-signature and therefore make customer convenience significantly better. It's just an example of how regulations evolve in Vietnam, but this constructive progressive feedback and conversation is the way to go. Well, you mentioned quite a bit about some of the technological developments that uh, you as an organization have invested in. Can you tell me what sort of things they are, why indeed you did it, and indeed what the results were? To understand the technological developments and investments we've made, one has to look back at the history and the beginnings of FE Credit. FE Credit started in 2011 in almost a small room inside BP Bank as a division with four people. And since then, it grew quite dramatically. Uh, within the first three years, it became the market leader uh, and by 2015, it was actually spun off as a separate company under the brand name FE Credit uh, and under the legal operating name as a VP Bank Finance Company. Since then, the growth has, momentum has continued. However, in 2017, the management did not rest on its laurels. The management recognized that while the first wave of growth will happen on the back of expansion of physical distribution, the next wave of growth is going to happen in the back of digitalization. The management made a big decision to invest in digitalization. This wasn't just about putting on a cool new website or a cool new app that made the front end experience feel nice. It was actually about an end to end digital evolution program. Many of the front end uh, apps, for example, our digital lending app, our card management app, our insurance apps, which are called Snap, FE Card Mobile and Shield, were all evolved and developed in a manner that was an end-to-end -end platform to enable a customer to deal with their finances without ever having to talk to FE Credit. In addition to that, many of the back office processes were automated using robotic process automation, using new technologies. What is really admirable is the way in which the digitalization was approached. It wasn't just about going and buying a big Goliath core banking solution. In fact, the management took the approach of working with a multitude of fintechs, finding the best solution for each problem area and then putting them together. In our digital lending platform, SNAP, the OCR, Optical Character Recognition Capability, the Face Recognition Capability, the Identity Verification Capability, the Instant Credit Decisioning Capabilities, all of these were put together by bringing the best of different fintech uh, solutions and assembling them together. 
And this wasn't just stopped at the front end. As I mentioned, even the back office processes were also automated and digitized. So as to make sure that to a customer who used to wait for a loan for anything from five to seven days, could get an instant approval and decisioning within 15 minutes as soon as they complete their application. The benefit to business has been quite significant. Uh, when we launched SNAP uh, in August 2018 as a pilot, uh, we were getting around uh, 500 downloads a day. As of last month, we were hitting a peak of as high as 8,000 downloads a day by customers. So one could see that if you put out a great solution, the consumer adoption rate is pretty high. We are now even more bullish and will be pursuing digitalization with even more fervor than before. Yes, all that sounds very exciting and also very futuristic. It does mean one thing, Vietnam, like many other nations in the world, is moving towards a, a cashless society. How soon and likely do you think that will start to occur? As the market leader, every innovation that FE Credit launches will have an impact on the market. We are very supportive of the movement towards a cashless society. How are we helping? First, our cash disbursements. Our loans used to get disbursed in cash at various points of sale at post offices. We have increasingly migrated many of these consumers to get direct bank credits and to get cash into their electronic wallets. This is one example of how we are supporting a cashless movement. Secondly, for payments. We have been deploying credit cards and cross-selling them to many of our consumers so that at merchants, they no longer need to carry cash and pay with cash, but instead use their credit line, which is available on demand, both in physical plastic, but also as a digital card in their mobile phones. Well, following up from that, of course, it uh, is quite clear to see that your portfolios continue to grow uh, very impressively. Uh, can I ask you what you attribute to that and what your plans are for growth in the future? Our portfolio continues to grow on the back of two key strategies. Historically, there's been a huge focus on new to bank, acquiring new to bank consumers. But in the last year, year and a half, we've been increasingly focused on deepening wallet share with our existing customers. Why? With existing customers, we actually have deep understanding of their payment patterns, of their behavioral aspects, of their social profile, their demographic profile. Having a large amount of this kind of data enables us to do uh, advanced analytics and be able to prepare models which will enable us to offer these customers better credit at the time when they want it in the form they want it. As a result, what we have seen is our growth has been driven through two key engines, both the new to bank coming in and the deepening of the existing to bank. Because of this, the overall portfolio credit quality keeps on improving because the more we get to know our existing consumers, the better we can serve them and the better we can help them manage their debt and collections. The other product that has actually helped us drive better portfolio quality is credit cards. Today, when we cross sell a customer on a credit card and they accept, we're almost instantly able to issue them a digital card, which then allows them to transact almost immediately with their mobile phones. Over time, what this gives us is far better behavioral profiling, spend patterns, etc., which then again helps feed better credit decisioning, enables us to make the right offer at the right time at the right place. Overall, it's a good story and a good path to improving portfolio performance. Well, yes, and that's been a big initiative for you. What will you say would be the other initiatives that you'd be looking for as you take the next stage forward in the development of FE Credit? As mentioned, our historical growth has been on the back of an expansion of physical distribution network. Our next wave of growth is gonna come from digital transformation and the entire digitization of the customer experience from initial acquisition to onboarding through to disbursements. The other strategies which we will pursue actively and have been pursuing are alliances and partnerships. Our alliances with major telcos have given us great learnings and have been quite successful, we will be pursuing partnerships in many more industries. Finally, the brand. FE Credit as a brand is very well known with over 90% of people having top of mind awareness. We can do a lot more by creating brand engagement and building brand love and brand presence. Eventually, this should lead us to be able to make absolutely the perfect offer 
in a customized manner to the customer when they want it, where they want it. Essentially, a CMO's dream. Exciting and fast-growing times ahead. Thank you so much for joining us today from Ho Chi Minh City. And once again, congratulations on the award from Global Banking and Finance. It's been a pleasure chatting with you today. On behalf of the team at FE, everyone, all 17,000 employees, I want to say a big thank you to Global Banking and Finance for these two prestigious awards. We are especially proud of receiving the award for delivering the best customer experience in Asia and the best consumer finance company in Vietnam.